Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man. Throughout the years, I've reviewed dozens of outdoor antennas, some large in size and some small. Most times, the larger antennas yield better results on the signal meter. But is this always the case? Are there some situations where a smaller antenna will perform better than a larger antenna? Stay tuned to find out. If you're a cord cutter or into antennas, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. So I'm going to answer the question right away. Most times a larger antenna will perform better than a smaller antenna, but not always. I'll first explain a few reasons why a larger antenna may work better. A larger antenna has more gain and covers a larger surface area than a smaller antenna meaning it will bring in a signal more reliably, especially if the signal is weak or if there are a lot of trees around. I know a lot of first-time cord cutters order a small directional antenna like this, which does work fine for many areas. However, most people are probably not aware of the fact that the signals may drop out when TV signals fluctuate as trees blow around the wind or if they're just genuinely weak from terrain in the area. In heavily wooded areas or areas beyond 40 miles from broadcast towers, a medium to large size antenna is usually required for reliable reception. Larger antennas also do a better job at grabbing weaker signals in general due to the larger surface area they cover. In a previous video, I showed how moving a small antenna as little as a few feet can have a huge impact on reception. Sometimes it's not feasible to really move an antenna around, especially if a mass is already up. Let's say that this is your mast on the roof, and this line represents where the signal hits the antenna. A basic small directional antenna won't quite reach the signal while a larger antenna will. A larger antenna also leaves some wiggle room for when the signal fluctuates in changing weather conditions. Now as crazy as it sounds, a larger antenna may actually perform worse than a smaller antenna in a few situations. The first is when someone purchases the largest antenna they can find, not realizing that it may be more optimized for low VHF band that's not really used anymore. In most areas where the majority of TV stations are on the UHF band and maybe only a few on the high VHF band, a smaller antenna more optimized for high VHF and UHF will likely perform better than a very large low VHF, high VHF, and UHF combo antenna like this. The more elements that are added to an antenna, like low VHF elements, it will impact the gain of other TV bands like high VHF and UHF. Most areas do not have low VHF broadcast, so people who order a large antenna like this might be impacting the reception of their local channels when there isn't even a low VHF channel to gain. As a reminder, low VHF TV stations broadcast on RF channels 2 through 6, high VHF is RF channel 7 through 13 and UHF is RF channels 14 through 36. These numbers are rarely tied to the channel number the TV station shows on the air or on your TV set. I always see people say, oh, I have a channel five in my area, so I need low VHF when it's actually not on channel five. It's critical to run a reception report at your location to see what frequencies are in your area to buy an antenna that's most optimized for them. RabbitEars.info is a great website to locate signal strength and RF channels in a given area. The RF channels are in parentheses on a reception report, and you can tell they're usually different than the channel a TV station shows on air. I also offer an antenna recommendation service on my website at antennamanpa.com, where I look at the reception report and determine the best antennas for the frequencies in your area based on my experience testing out over 100 antenna models and actually installing them in four different TV markets. Another situation when a smaller antenna may actually work better than a larger antenna is when TV stations are in slightly different directions. Smaller antennas tend to be more multi-directional with a wider gain pattern than larger antennas, which may be beneficial in urban and suburban areas where TV stations are slightly spread out like this. Pointing a smaller antenna in the direction where most of the stations are located or somewhere in the middle will likely grab them all compared to an extremely directional large antenna. In fact, Televis did an experiment by comparing the signal strength of TV stations in an area on their small DeNova mix and large long range mix antenna. 
The average person would probably assume the larger long range mix would perform better than the smaller de novo mix in any situation. Oh, you can't buy too much of an antenna, the bigger the better. While the long range mix did bring in a much higher signal level and quality on all the channels it was pointed towards, it actually was not able to acquire a few channels in a different direction due to its very high directivity. The channels coming from the north and labeled as unlock on the MER chart cannot be decoded with the long range mix point west, but can be received with the de novo mix. The reason is the de novo mix has a much wider reception pattern at around 60 degrees compared to 30 degrees on the long range mix. So it's able to grab those channels that are too attenuated by a more narrow reception pattern on the long range mix. This doesn't mean you should always go for a smaller antenna if there are signals from multiple directions. Smaller antennas tend to have less gain. If signals are marginal, they might not be able to grab them compared to a larger antenna, possibly on a rotator. The majority of areas have their major ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox channels in the same direction, so that's usually where you should focus pointing the antenna towards, and not unreliable out-of-market channels. To get back to the main point, most times a larger antenna will perform better than a smaller antenna, but not always depending on the situation. Especially when people screw up their reception with a junk coaxial cable, the wrong amplifier, or pointing the antenna incorrectly, which happens a lot actually. It's not often that I recommend a really large traditional style antenna like this for a weak signal area, since most locations have the majority of stations on the UHF band and no low VHF. Meaning a smaller antenna more optimized for high VHF and UHF will perform better. Understand that there is no one antenna that's best for the city, suburb, rural area, etc. I recommend about a dozen different antenna models of my antenna recommendation service depending on the specific reception report and tree coverage in a given area. If you want to see if your antenna is best for your area, definitely consider an antenna recommendation on my website. One last thing to consider when deciding how antennas perform. When watching my antenna reviews or comparing antennas you purchase, a higher signal level doesn't necessarily mean a better antenna. The design of an antenna also has to be taken into consideration. If an antenna is larger, the signal levels will likely be more consistent than a smaller antenna that doesn't cover a large surface area, even if the smaller antenna brings in a higher signal level at one point. I'd personally rather have a larger antenna with a very slightly lower signal level that's more reliable than a slightly higher signal from a small antenna that may drop out in bad weather. Thanks for watching this YouTube video. Hopefully you learned something in it because there was a lot of information. An additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or is a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos have helped you cut the cord or if you just think they're cool and would like to help support them while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button in this video. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you're not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attached a link in the description of the video. Just make sure to add info at antenna man PA.com to your address list or you may not get any emails from me at all. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel for more cord cutting and antenna related videos and have an awesome day.